There's a hard rain falling. A white dove is flying. A mother is calling. A lover is crying. There's a silver mist on a mountain. A million tears in a fountain. A father is calling. Son, come home. Hold on to the time. Brothers, 29. There's a great river flowing, and near wind is blowing. Children, they are weeping.
Hello, ABM or road header? Hey Dan, what was that you looking for? I was just after the ABM and road header. Hello, Sparkies! Hello, underground, any sparkies? Hello, monitor place. Anyone underground? Hello, monitor place. Anyone underground? Anyone? I didn't know what was going on. It was an extremely loud bang, and uh, I was instantly like disorientated. Uh, I, yeah, it was, uh, my initial thought was obviously there's, there's been some type of explosion, but I just didn't understand what the hell was going on. So, pretty much initially after the explosion. Um, a, a large gust or wafting effect of, of, of smoke and gas come flying around the corner, engulfing me, and that's when I knew it was serious. Like, and I, I, I attempted to put my self rescuer on. Um, I was shaking. It was it was it was extremely difficult. Um, it was nothing like um, what we were shown the one time um, in the induction. I, I tried to remember from a couple of years ago um, how, to, how to put it on and how to activate it and, and uh, I, I thought that I was doing everything right but it didn't activate fast enough for what I needed um, and it uh, wasn't giving me the, 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 the oxygen that I needed. When I fell unconscious, uh, it, I describe it to people that have, I've talked to about it before, that it was kind of like a euphoric effect. Um, I had no feeling in my body and it was pretty much, I could feel my, I, I, I suppose I could feel my heart beating and slowing down. It was almost like waiting to die. Um, it was pretty scary, but there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. Uh, it was it, it was at that point that I started thinking about my family and, 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 and kind of trying to fathom what, what exactly is, is going on, like what, 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 what has happened further into the mine for this to happen. And it was just 
after that I just blacked out and I, I, my memory starts getting a bit hazy. When I, when I started to come to and I started to remember things, I remember lying on the, on the ground, I remember the trickle of water um, going down the roadway, um, just certain noises and stuff like that. Um, I remember being very cold um, and I remember seeing smoke drift over the top of me back in, in, in by of, of, of the mine, so it was, it was like the, the, the smoke was drawing back into the mine. At that point, I attempted to roll myself onto, onto my belly and, and, make, and stand up um, un, unsuccessfully several times. I, I fell over. Um, and when I eventually got, got back up, I held onto uh, an, a compressed airline um, that was not pressurized and it was trickling out with, with fresh air and I was breathing on that to kind of clear the clear the gas and smoke around my face and yeah after that I, I, I made my way in by a couple of meters to a phone that I knew was close I made that I made a phone call um, out of the mine because we were one thing that I do remember about the about our inductions was our emergency number if anything should happen um, I pushed 555, which is a general underground emergency number, and uh, it rung two times, and I received a, a, a voice message from, from Pike River Coal saying that they could not take my call, and I couldn't believe it. I hung the phone up after receiving that voicemail. After a few profanities, I, I rung, rung the control number and um, I got the control room officer and um, the phone was pretty much immediately ripped out of his hand and it was the mine manager. Um, he explained to me, he, he said to me, you know, what has happened? What can you see? Are you with anyone? Are you okay? Um, I, I answered him, I said, there's no one with me, I can't see anything, there's been an explosion, I'm, I'm dying, help me. Um, and he said to me, Stay, stay low, you need to make your way out Daniel and you need to get to our fresh air base which was out by of me around 400 metres to 500 metres away from where I, where I was situated. And so I hung the phone up and um, made, my, uh, made my way out. It was inc incredibly difficult even though it was, it was just one, all I had to go do go was downhill and and I had to go one direction um, with the smoke and the, and the gas. I was choking and, and I couldn't, uh, it was very disorientating. Um, I followed the pipes that were about shoulder height um, to, to try and make my way out. And on my, on my journey, I came across another loader. Um, there was no operator in the cab. I squeezed past that loader and I found the operator at the back of it, uh, semi-conscious. Uh, on his hands and knees, and it was uh, Russell Smith, uh, the other survivor. I managed to come up to him. Um, I, I, I pulled his head back to see who, who it actually was. I realised it was Russell. I tried to help. I tried to speak to him. He, w he was unresponsive, even though he was his eyes were open. Um, he was he was 
dribbling and 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 and, and spewing a little bit, and and um, I attempted to get his rescuer into into his mouth, and um, he just would not take it. He, he would not allow his, allow it in his mouth, and he just would spit it back out like it was a like it was a dummy. Um, I attempted several times, and it just wasn't happening. So I gave up on it. I threw it. I just disregarded it. Guarded the the self rescuer to the ground. I attempted to pick up Russell, um, and with, uh, after a few attempts of of trying to pick him up, um, I couldn't do it. So I got behind him and I grabbed him under his armpits and I dragged him backwards. Um, and I made my way out with him to the fresh air base where I was directed to go. So this fresh air base. Um, it was meant. It, it was meant to be a, a an emergency pod, pretty much. Um, you're meant to be able to contain yourself in there until help arrives, so to speak. Um, I, I got there, and there was meant to be extra self rescuers, first aid kits, bottled water. There's meant to be a compressed air line pumping into there, so it's a has a has a dual door system to you know keep a positive seal, keep fresh air get pumping in there, so it's safe. Um, and, and a phone, and there was nothing in there. No self-rescuer, no bottled water, no, no first aid kit. The phone was disconnected, the airline was disconnected. There was an out of service tag on the phone saying decommissioned due to be moved. We weren't told that in, in our toolbox talks or no one was informed about it. Um, I excuse my language, but I, I, I lost my shit. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that there was, there, we weren't informed that it was um, no longer in use. I couldn't understand why my manager would tell me to go there. Um, it, was later it was later found out that he didn't even know that it was um, decommissioned and had none of the gear in there. Um, so that just shows that the, the lack of, uh, the lack of communication throughout um, the crews, throughout management. So I was pretty angry, but um, I had to deal with it then and there. And so I, after throwing a bit of a wobbly, um, I came out of the, uh, came back out of the fresh air base and I grabbed, said to Russell, screw this, let's get out of here. Picked him back up and we uh, threw his arm over my shoulder and we kind of three-legged it out. out out of the mine, um, only, only to stop for brief periods to try and get some, some uh, stored, stored pressure out of fresh air out of, out of the uh, compressed air line. When I came over the, the, the slight horizon um, to when you can first see the daylight um, to the portal, I thought, hey, we, we might just make, make this, we might just get out of this alive. Um, it was an amazing feeling and I'll never forget that moment. Um, as we got closer to the portal, I was expecting to see lights, I was expecting to see movement or action at the portal, um, and there was nothing. Uh, when we got to the portal, uh, my thoughts were correct, and, and there was absolutely not one single person there. Um, it was later told to me that they kind of forgot that I was coming out of the mine. They didn't know anything about Russell at the time, and I just couldn't believe it. I I looked around for a, a, anybody, and there was just no one there, and I was just hysterical. Uh, there was a intercom system right by there, by the portal there. Um, I, I made contact, um, and I said, "Get get your asses down here now. We need help." And they, within five or so minutes. There was, there was paramedics sent. 29 men, they, all really good men, all, all had bright futures, died un, un, 
for, for no reason. And it, it just, it's really upsetting, you know, it, it, simply for the fact that no one's been held accountable for it. There's no fines being put on, put in place. And it's just like the government have just gone, oh well. And it, there's no justice, is my point. Th those men are still lying in that mine today like, like they don't even exist. And, and, and it's bullshit. I, I, I don't want that to ever happen to anybody else. I couldn't begin to explain to anybody how terrible it was and how terrible the last seven years have been. So I just, I want people to really wake up and, 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 and maybe think before they, before they act. Um, I suppose me getting on camera here and, and, and showing this documentary is, is my, my attempt to, to bring awareness to it and, 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 and try to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, it, it shouldn't have happened. It was unnecessary and, and it just it makes my blood boil just every day thinking about it. But, you know, it, it, I've got I've to accept it and, and, and try and make the future of mining. It doesn't matter whether it's in Queensland or, or, or New Zealand or wherever. I've got, to make, I've got to do all I can to make it a safe place to work. Um, to this day, I, I, I do not know how I came out of there alive, as well as Russell. But it, it also, it, you know, it shoots a little bit closer to my heart, losing my, my, my younger brother. He was only 21 years old. It's, it's beyond, it's beyond me that how anyone could possibly allow this to happen, let alone get away with, get away with it. I just want people to, to realise that this is, this is not, this is not on and it can't happen again. Um,